Chapter 17 is about binomial and geometric models. Geometric models are something that we've actually already covered. We covered them pretty much back in chapter 14, but you just didn't know that they were called geometric models. A geometric model is when you have uh, successes and failures. The order in which the success occurs does matter. Um, you want to re often repeat the trials until you get your success. That's what generally we're trying to do. So a computer chip manufacturer rejects 2% of their chips because they fail the pre-sale testing. Uh, question one asks us to find the probability that the fifth chip is the one that um, is the first bad one that we find. So that means we had four good ones and then we had a uh, bad one. So the probability of being good is a 0.98. You want four of those and then times um, 0.02. So you can do 0 0.98 times 0 0.98 times 0 0.98 times 0 0.98 times 0 0.02 or you can do 0 0.98 to the fourth times 0 0.02. Probability comes out to be 0.018 or 1.8 percent chance of the first one that we find being bad on the fifth chip. What is the probability that we find at least one bad one within the first ten that we test? This is an at least problem which means we're going to go about it backwards and do one minus the opposite which the opposite of this situation means none of them are bad. So one minus none of them being bad means 0.98 to the tenth power because we have ten good ones. 1 minus 0.98 to the tenth power would be 0.1829 or 18.29 percent. The expected value of a geometric model is 1 divided by P, where P is the probability of your success. So uh, how many chips do we expect to test in order to find a bad one? Here P is 0.02 because finding a bad one is the successful event that we are looking for. So 1 divided by 0.02 is 50 chips. Another way to think about this is one out of every 50 would be bad. Here's another example. About 8% of males are colorblind. There's four questions for you here to try. Pause the video until you're ready to go through their answers. Number one, what is the probability that she won't find anyone colorblind among the first four men she checks? That's 0 0.92 to the fourth. 0.92 is the probability that the man is not colorblind. We want four of those. 0.92 times 0.92 times 0.92 times 0.92 is 0.716 or 71.6 percent. Number two, what's the probability that the first colorblind man she finds is the sixth person she checks? So five men were not colorblind and then the sixth one is. So 0.92 to the fifth times 0.08. This is 0.0527 or 5.27 percent. What is the probability that she finds someone colorblind before checking the tenth man? So that means somewhere in the first nine we had a colorblind person. This is another way of saying what's the probability of at least one colorblind person being in the first nine? It's an at least problem you want to do it backwards. One minus the probability that none are colorblind in the first nine means one minus 0.92 to the ninth and this is 0.472 or 47.2 percent. How many men would you expect the researcher to examine in order to find somebody who's colorblind? One divided by P would be one divided by 0.08. The successful event is finding the colorblind person. So one divided by 0.08 is 12.5 men. Don't cut the man in half. We want to round him to um, 13 men. So about one out of every 13 is colorblind. A binomial model, still there's going to be successes and failures, however these are different than the geometric models because the success that the order occurs in does not matter. We do not try to do these by hand. It's more complicated than what you initially think. We do these in our calculator using second vars. If you go into second vars in your calculator and scroll down, you're looking for binome PDF and binome CDF when you're working with a binomial model. Binome PDF stands for finding the exact amount of successes, and binome CDF means we want to accumulate successes up to a certain point. For example, we're flipping a coin five times. We want the probability of getting exactly two heads. Now those two heads can occur anywhere in those five flips. They can be the first and the second, or they can be the second and the third, or they can be the third and the fourth, or so on. But they can occur anywhere in those five flips. So this is a lot harder than just doing 0.5 times 0.5 and then 0.5 times 0.5 times 0.5. It's not that easy. 
we're going to use the binomial model to set this up. Binom PDF is what we want here because we want exactly two heads. When you put in binom PDF in your calculator, you're going to enter three numbers. The first number is the total, which here is five flips, comma. The second number is the probability of success, which here is 0.05, I mean um, 0 0.5, which is 50% chance, 0.5 and then comma, the third number is how many successes we want, which here is two. So five for the total, 0.5 for the probability, two for the number of successes. Hit enter, you should get 0.3125 or 31.25 percent. This is also 5 sixteenths if you convert it to a fraction. Now here's how that works or how that's happening. These are all the different possibilities that you can get when you flip a coin five times. Yes, I did just list them all out here. Um, I remember when I was taking statistics in college, I had an Indian professor, and when he would do a problem like this, he'd always say H instead of H, and it took me a good two weeks to figure out that he was trying to say H and not H, and that um, it was really like flipping a coin, but I was very lost at first. So lucky you, I'm not Indian. Um, okay, now we're going to circle the number of outcomes in which we have exactly two heads. So take a second and go through and circle all the outcomes that have exactly two heads. And these occur 10 times out of the 32 possibilities that we have here listed. And if you reduce that fraction, you get 5 over 16, which is the same answer we got from binome PDF when we did it in our calculator. So this is why we don't try to do it by hand. You have to list out the entire sample space and then circle the ones that apply to what you're looking for. And that's just a pain in the booty. All right. Try these. We're going to flip a coin five times. What's the probability that you flip exactly four heads? Try that one. Pause until you're ready to check it. Binome PDF 5, comma, 0.5, comma, 4. 5 for the total, 0.5 for the probability, 4 for how many we want. This is 0.15625 or 15.625%. This is the same thing as 5 over 32 as a fraction. Now we're going to try exactly three heads. Pause until you're ready to check that one. Binome PDF 5, comma, 0.5, comma, 3. 5 is the total. 0.5 is the probability. 3 is how many we want. This is 0.3125 or 31.25% or 5 out of 16 if it's a fraction form. All five heads. Try that one. Binome PDF, 5, comma, 0.5, comma, 5, 5 for the total, 0.5 for the probability, 5 for how many we want. 0 0.03125 or 3.125 percent or 1 out of 32 chance of that happening. No more than four heads. First we get, in, or this is the first time we get into binome CDF instead of PDF. We're accumulating all the way up to um, the possibility of no more than four heads. This should be this, I did this wrong. This should be um, binom CDF 5, comma, 0.5, comma, 4, because we want no more than four heads. That means four can be included. So that should be a four there, not a three on the end number. But binom CDF 5, comma, 0.5, comma, 3, and then I'm guessing my answer is probably wrong here too because you want to accumulate up to four. Let me do that real fast and I'll tell you what the correct answer is. <laughs> TV timeout. 5, comma, 0.5, comma, 4. 0.96875 or 96.875 percent. As a fraction, that is 31 out of 32. So no more than four heads means you're accumulating up to four. At least three heads. At least problems we always do backwards. One minus the probability of the opposite event. The opposite event here would be up to two heads. So one minus up to two heads means one minus binomial CDF accumulating up to two heads, 5 comma 0.5 comma 2, and hit enter when you get that all set up, 0.5 or 50 percent or one half as a fraction. All right, you try this one, and pause until you're ready to check your answers. Number one, we want the first bullseye to be the third arrow. That means that we want two misses and then a make. That's 0 0.2 times 0 0.2 times 0.80 or 0.2 to the second times 0.80, which is 0.032 or 3.2 percent. We want to miss at least once. It's an at least problem. Go backwards. 1 minus the probability of missing none, which is 1 minus 0.8 to the sixth. We have six makes in a row. 
That's 73.79%. Um, probability of the first bullseye being the fourth or the fifth. Find the probability of it being on the fourth and add in the probability of it being on the fifth. If, it's on the, if the first bullseye is on the fourth arrow, that means we have three misses and a make. If it's on the fifth arrow, that means we had four misses and then a make. Do each separate probability and then add them all up. She gets 0.77 percent. Very low percentage of chance there. Now we get into the binomial questions. Find exactly four bullseyes. Binom PDF, six is our total, comma, 0.8 is our probability, comma, four is how many we want. This is 24.58 percent. Find the probability of at most five bullseyes. Six is our total, comma, 0.8, Comma five is how many we're accumulating up to, so binom CDF, not PDF. And this is 73.79%. Suppose that she's going to shoot until she misses. This is 1 over P, so 1 over 0 0.2. 0 0.2 is the successful event, the missing, that we're looking for. And we would expect to shoot five shots, so 1 out of every five is going to be a miss. The mean and standard deviation for a binomial model. The mean is n times p, n is the number of trials you have, p is the probability of success occurring. Standard deviation is the square root of n times p times q, n is still the number of trials, p is still the probability of success, q is the probability of failure, the opposite of p. Suppose that we have the archer in the previous slide, she was shooting 80% for her percentage, and she's going to shoot 200 arrows. How many bullseyes do you expect her to make? That's n times p, 200 times 0.8 would be 160. So we expect her to make 160. What's the standard deviation? Square root of n times p times q. That's the square root of 200 times 0.8 times 0.2. q is the opposite of p. If she has an 80% chance of making it, that's a 20% chance of missing it. Multiply those in your calculator and square root it. 5.66 shots is her standard deviation. What is the probability that she makes at least 140 bullseyes? At least problems are done backwards. 1 minus the probability of the opposite, which is up to 139, accumulating up to 139. 1 minus binom CDF, 200 is our total, comma, 0.80 is our probability, comma, 139 is what we're accumulating up to. 99.97% chance that she's going to make at least 140.